Okay. Let's talk about Hugh Forge. <laughs> oh. I was really, 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 really tempted to buy Hugh Forge. Um, just because, um, you know, $175, actually not a bad price. And then, um, you also get a $175, um, gift card for, or coupon for, um, Polymaker. So you're basically getting $175 in Polymaker and Hugh Forge for free. Sort of. <laughs> okay. Maybe I read this wrong, but this is an issue that is very, very important to me. And it's about property rights. <laughs> um, I designed something. I designed this rocket. The design for this rocket's my property. Now, you can make something similar, and it'd be your design, and you can do whatever you want with it. But this one's mine. And I'm going to sell this. Okay, this is going to be a design somebody can buy. I can sell it because it's my property. I own it. Now, there are two kinds of property involved here. I own both. If you buy one from me, you'll own one. Okay. Um, maybe there's better words for these. I don't know, but it's what I call IPR and PPR. You have intellectual property rights. That would be the design. Okay. This is basic shapes, so there's not much IP here. Um, contrary to some companies trying to own Hexagon. <laughs> um... But then you have PPR. Possession is nine-tenths the law. What does that actually mean? Well, it means the assumption is you own it if you possess it. And if someone wishes to challenge your ownership, the burden of proof is on them. They've got to prove that you don't own it, that, you know, someone else owns it. That's part of the reason why we're running into a problem with squatters, is they come up with enough false information to muddy the waters to imply that they do have a right to be there, a fake lease, for example. You can't just kick them out because that's a home, okay? That's why in some places it's a little difficult. They do need to find balance in that. But the point is, that's where that comes from. Um, I possess it, I own it. This is my property. Now, I have a right to sell this because, well, I made it. I designed it. But I also have the right to sell this Sony phone and I also have the right to sell this Camel Max Razor, which worked very well, by the way. I like this one a lot. You know, I also have the right to sell this battery for this Stanley chisel. It's called First Sale Doctrine. I have the right to sell the property I own because I own this. It's not rented. It's not borrowed. It's mine. It belongs to me. I have the right to sell it. This is why, um, you know, I tell people, you know, prints that you make, even that say no commercial usage, you're allowed to sell them. Um, commercial usage is not the same thing as for money. If I sell you my rocket as my property, hey, I have this rocket. I want to sell it to you. 30 bucks. Okay. Um, that's not commercial usage. Commercial means in the business of. Okay. So if I say, okay, I'm going to put this rocket up for sale, I'm going to sell it on my website, that's commercial usage, okay? So sell this one, selling my personal property. Sell 20 of them, commercial usage. So if I make a copy of this, I can't sell that because I don't own the IP for it. I'd have to make my own version of this. That's the... IPR is intellectual property rights. PPR is personal property rights. When I buy this Stanley chisel, I don't own the IPR in this, but I do own the PPR. This belongs to me. It's my. It's a piece of property that belongs to me. The Hugh Ford software I buy belongs to me. The copy of Windows 10 that I bought for my PC belongs to me. It's my property. Now, I can't make copies of it and sell it to other people or even give it away for free. I can't do that because I don't own the IPR. 
the creator of the software, Microsoft or the gentleman who made HueForge. He owns the IPR for HueForge. That's his software. But the copy I bought belongs to me. And if I want to sell that to someone else, that's my right. Because it's for sale doctrine. I own the piece of property that includes that copy of the software that I paid for. Now, that's not what this is about. I'm just trying to explain the difference between IPR and PPR. Because I was ready to plunk down 175 bucks on my credit card until I watched the hot text video, hot takes video, and I was like, uh, F no. <laughs> F no, I'm not buying under those conditions. I hope I'm misreading this, but I don't think it is. I am. Imagine I buy this chisel. And I make a work of art with this chisel. And then I want to sell that work of art. Do I need Stanley's permission to sell that work of art? Does Stanley have any right whatsoever to impose conditions on what I can and can't do with my property just because I use this tool in the production of that property? Does Mingda or Creality have any right to tell me what I can and can't sell if I use one of their printers to make something? Uh, I made this on a Mingda and a Creality printer. Does either company have the right to dictate terms to me on my ability to sell my rockets? Hell no. I could be wrong, but I believe this has already been in the courts. Uh, uh, what I, I, I could be remembering this wrong. I'm going to try to research this tonight and try to find it. I haven't had luck finding it. Um, but I believe it's already been to court where Microsoft tried to say they had some level of, or maybe it was Adobe, some level of ownership or rights to control the creative output of their software because their software made it. That would be like Stanley or Creality saying they have a right and a say in the output of their printers. They don't. Neither does Microsoft. The... The creative energy to create that output, that book or that photograph or that rocket or that painted plastic picture came from the artist, the person making it. It didn't come from the software. The software was just a tool, like a slicer, like a CAD program, like a tool. It's a printer, whatever, paintbrush. You know, it would, does the, the person who made the paintbrushes that Van Gogh used have a right to say they are owed royalties for every painting of his because their paintbrushes were used? No. So, what's the issue with Hue Forged? I know this is going to get me a lot of enemies. I don't care. This is an important point I'm making. To me, this is important. Maybe it's not important to you. But Hue Forged says that you have to pay for a commercial license to sell your works from their software. And I have a serious problem with that. <laughs> a very serious problem with that. Because Hue Forge has no right, has no stake in my creations. None. Zero. Well, what about Fusion 360? That's different. They're giving you commercial software for free. And they're saying, don't make money using this. If you want to make money, you have to actually buy the software. 100% fair. So if Hugh Forge said, okay, here's a free copy, make whatever you want, but you can't sell it. Well, first of all, they, they can't do that. If I, if I make one thing on Hugh Forge and I decide to sell that one thing, they have no say. We have established law that says I can sell my property. Now, if I start making dozens of copies of that one thing and selling them, well, now it's not just me selling my property. Now I'm in the business of, and that they do have a right to say I can or cannot do. They don't have a right to control it. They don't have a right to profit from it. But they have a right to say I can or can't do it if they're giving me something for free. What, you're, what they're saying is we are giving you this commercial software that's worth money for free. In exchange for getting it for free, you can't use it commercially. 100% okay with that. I pay for Fusion 360. Anything I make with it, I can sell. In perpetuity. Because it belongs to me. <laughs> I own it. I own this. I designed it. <laughs> I own it. I designed it. I own it. Okay? If you look at their license terms, so first of all, if you look at the $175, it seems to make sense, right? You pay $175, bucks, 
you're allowed to use it commercially you get two years of upgrades okay that makes sense i can live with that but i need to display a certificate of permission a permit on my site when i sell my my property my works of creation that i simply used a tool hueforge to make you have to display a permit <laughs> Uh, excuse me? What the actual fuck? No, I'm not displaying a permit. Uh, do, do I have to, uh, go to Stanley and say, please, sir, may I have a permit to sell the works that I create using your chisel? Do I have to go to Creality and say, please, sir, do I have permission to sell my works? No, I'm not going to ask permission. Maybe, maybe that's not what he intended. Maybe this is all a misunderstanding and he did not intend that. Maybe it's just an overzealous form of piracy protection that he didn't think about the consequences, the long-term consequences of doing something like that to where I have to prove that I paid for something, that I have to, I have to carry around a receipt for this and prove I bought it, and my permission slip from Stanley to prove that it's okay with Stanley for me to make this. Because if you look at the $80 version of the software, it's even worse. You pay 80 bucks for this program, probably a fair price. 175 is probably a fair price. But you pay, you know, $800 for this software. Because if you pay $80 a year for the next 10 years, that's $800. <laughs> so you, you pay 800 bucks for this software and you have to keep paying it. Or you're no longer allowed to commercially sell anything. Your license to sell your own property is revoked. What? <laughs> so, a, a year after I design this rocket and print it using a Creality printer, if I don't pay Creality a maintenance fee every year, they revoke my permission to sell my designs? What the fuck? <laughs> fuck no! But that sounds exactly like what he is saying. He is saying to commercially sell these, forget about the software side. I don't care about the fact that he, you get two years of updates and then you have to pay you know, the $80 fee if you want to get you know, the latest version of the software. So you could buy the $175 software, be hunky-dory with it for the next five years, and decide, hey, I like some of the new features in the software. Kind of like Simplify 3D. You pay for an upgrade or you keep using the software you have. All right, and if you want the new features, you pay for the upgrade and you get the, you know, the new features. Although they told us those would be free, but still, okay. So he's saying, he's being upfront. He's saying that if you want the newer features, you pay the then current yearly price. And you get updated to current and you continue to get upgrades for another year, I think. Um, assuming he updates it that often, we'll see. I, I see there being a terminus to this software where eventually, what more updates can you make? Um... The, um, but you can continue to use it forever. Your permission to sell your works commercially is forever. Well, first of all, I don't need your permission. I do not need your permission to sell my works. Otherwise, it's not my works. <laughs> if I need Creality's permission to sell this, then it belongs to Creality, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I just picked reality because that's a name everybody knows i'm not picking on reality they've done nothing like that i'm just, mingda creality any cubic eligu you know tron xy whoever you know gmax i love them even though they're out of business fucking sucks but you know whatever you know does you know creality has no say i do not need to ask their permission that printer doesn't belong to them it belongs to me and what i make with it belongs to me the copy of the software i buy belongs to me i own it it's not your software anymore it's mine now if you want to charge for upgrades that's fine it's your prerogative i think a lot of people should especially with stuff like this that takes a lot of work um but the software i had i do have belongs to me it's my property it's not under license i don't recognize license license applies to what you do um with the intellectual property which is nothing if I only have the one copy, because that one copy belongs to me. This is part of the problem with software, is that they use this idea of license to revoke people's personal property rights. It would be like this rocket being licensed. <laughs> and so, you know, if I want to continue making this rocket, I got to renew my license? What? 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> and the eighty dollar one's even worse. You got to keep paying the eighty dollars to keep selling your works. It's not that the upgrades stop and you can keep using the software. No, you're no. If you do not pay the eighty dollars next year, if I'm reading this correctly, maybe I'm reading this wrong. So please correct me if I'm wrong. But the way I'm reading this is, if you stop paying the eighty dollars, you lose the right to sell commercially including things you've already created. Now, stop paying $80, stop getting updates to the software. Sure, that makes sense to me. Pay 80 bucks, you get one year of updates, and that's it, no more updates. Pay 175, you get two years of updates. It's basically the same price. 80 bucks a year, you know, a, or what is it? 77.50 a year, you save five bucks, okay? But then you stop getting upgrades. And if you want further upgrades, you got to pay for them. No problem. I'm totally fine with that. But I do not require Hugh Forge's permission to sell my property. Under U.S. law, as far as I'm aware, your license is not allowed to dictate that. Because that's covered by federal law. <laughs> I mean that's 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 unlawful seizure of property you're seizing my property and you're saying you own it unless i pay you unless i get permission from you and display said permission am i overthinking this correct me if i'm wrong i i i love hugh forge i love what he's doing i love the things people are making with it I love the fact that companies like Polymaker are getting behind them. Yeah, Polymaker sees a lot of filament being sold, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> They're a filament company. They want to sell filament. <laughs> but I <laughs> just made another joiner for one of my rockets. Um, so let me know in the comments below, am I overthinking this, or am I seeing this exactly as it is, that I require his permission to sell my property that belongs to me. And that not only do I need his permission, but he will issue me a permit. That's what it is. You call it a certificate of license. I call it a permit. Because you're saying that without this, I can't sell my works. That means it's permission to sell, which means it's a permit. I am required to secure a permit, which he can deny or revoke. Again, do you think it is okay in any version of the multiverse for Stanley to require me to not only make ongoing payments, which is one problem, but also to ask, receive their permission, ask and receive their permission to sell what I create with this chisel and to display that permit anywhere I sell works created with this chisel for... Anytime I shave my face and want to do a for-profit video, I need to seek this company's permission and display face shaved with permission by Kemmel. <laughs> this 3D print authorized by Creality or Anycubic or Eligu. Here is my permit from 3D printer manufacturer that I pay a yearly license for for permission to sell what I've created. Hello? He does... Now, I, I saw him on Hot Takes, and he did not come across as some neo-Nazi fascist crazy wacko. So I'm hoping he just doesn't comprehend what he's done here. Because he doesn't have the right. And in fact, I think it's illegal. I don't think he's legally allowed to do that. C correct me if I'm wrong. Do we have any copyright lawyers who know? Is he legally allowed to take ownership of my property and say that I need his permission? I thought this was settled case law already. So I'm hoping this was just an overzealous form of, you know, piracy copy protection that he's trying to protect, you know, what is obviously his investment. But his only right is to sell his software. Once he's sold his software to me, anything I create with that software belongs to me. Now, there are exceptions to this. For example, um, if you create something with, for example, AI-generated software, 
theoretically, it could be argued you don't own the copyright to that works because you didn't really put any creative control into that works. You gave a prompt to a computer and it made something. So that would be like a clip art generator or something like that, or a sound generator. You could argue that you're not actually the creator of those works, that the company that made the software made those works. I believe that was one of the arguments used in the court case about you know, software creating documents. I don't remember who it was, Microsoft, Adobe or something. It was one of the big ones where they said, you know, your software is just the tool. It's just the screwdriver, the chisel, the nippers, the knife, the glue, the tube. It's, it's just a tool. The actual creation is coming from the person wielding the tools. So when you use something like QForge or Simplify 3D, because Simplify 3D tries the same bullshit, it actually still exists in their license where they try to dictate how many computers you can run it on. I don't know. My, my computers didn't buy a license. I bought a license. The license is for me, not the computers. <laughs> I can and will run it on as many computers as I want. <laughs> now, I can't have multiple users because I bought it for one, me. So, you know, if my sister got into 3D printing and I wanted her to use Simplify 3D, I would have to buy a copy for her because I can't, that would be violating their IPR if I just shared it with her. You know, if she was going to become a regular user of 3D printing. Um, but they try this too, saying you can't sell the G code you make with Simplify 3. Pfft, I sell it when every file set I use. <laughs> uh, that, 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 that G code belongs to me. That, that G code was created by my hard work. <laughs> okay. Your software is just a tool. It's just a framework in which I have created this file. And I've told how the amount of work I put into making these G code files, <laughs> it's, it's, it's mine. <laughs> I own it. And they have no legal right to claim ownership of my property. Well, the same thing applies to Microsoft. If you write a book using Microsoft Word, Microsoft can't say, well, you have to keep paying us to sell that book. You have to, you know, give us, essentially, get permission from us, give us royalties to sell that book. Just like Adobe can't say, well, if you're using Lightroom, then your pictures actually partly belong to us. No, that's not how that works. The same thing here. Hueforge can't claim ownership of your creations. That's exactly what they're doing. And not only are they doing that, but they're doing it retroactively. They're saying that your right to sell your property is an ongoing license. And if you stop paying, unless you pay the 175, you lose that license. And even with the 175, they still have to issue you permission and you have to display that permit to sell your work. Now, am I crazy here? Or is that a hard no? <laughs> I'd love to hear from the Hueforge creator. I, I hope I'm just misunderstanding this. I hope you just don't understand what it is you did when you set those terms. If that becomes precedent, you're just eroding personal property rights that much more. Imagine if Chaos Cortec or, you know, Fix You, my dude, made something. And the CAD program they used, or the slicer they used, or the printer you used, or the filament company they used says, no, 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 you need our permission to sell that. Hello? <laughs> Would anybody think that's okay? <laughs> Would anybody, anybody, anybody think that's okay? For the, the tool creator to own rights to your work? I mean, work for hire is different. If a company hands me a bunch of tools and says, I want you to create this for us, well, now I'm just a tool. Not, not a tool in, like, the bad way, but a tool in, like, a tool, okay? They, they are hiring me to create something for them. They own it. I was simply hired to be one of the tools in the process to create it. That's a work for hire, and that, that's not a problem. That's a totally separate thing. But Hugh Ford's saying that you have to pay them not for the software, you're not paying them for the software. You're paying them for permission to sell your works and creations that you create using their software. And if you stop paying them or you don't display the permit that they give you, that, they, that you have to get permission from them because they have to issue it to you, if you don't display the permit, you lose your right to sell your creations. Let me know down below. To me, I think that's a massive, massive moral and ethical overstep. I think it's illegal.
I don't think they're allowed to do that. And suggestions on how they can protect their software without stealing my property. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you have a right to keep people from stealing your property, but you can't do it by stealing my property. <laughs> and if I have to either, because both are wrong, if I have to either pay you to sell my property or get permission from you to sell my property, then what you're saying is it's not my property. It's yours. If I need your permission, then it belongs to you. That's why I tell people, you don't own your home. <laughs> you think you own your home, but you don't. The state owns your home. You know, you want to do most serious things to your home, you need permission. You want to sell it, you need permission. You don't pay your taxes, the owner of the property, the state, is going to take it from you. <laughs> you don't actually own your home. I don't own this home. I have first right of tenancy. That's the highest level of ownership we permit in this country. That's why they can make me pay rent every year. We call it property tax, but let's be straight. It's rent. And what happens when you don't pay rent? The owner, the landlord, comes and takes the property from you. I am not going to ask QForge for permission to sell my property. If they remove that wording and those conditions from their license, I'm ready to plop down 175 and I've never even played with it yet. I mean, hell, I'll get $175 in Polymaker and their software for free. I'm game. <laughs> but I'm not going to give up my property rights to my creations to do it. And I am not going to ask them for permission to sell my work. I mean, am I going to sell anything from Hugh No, it's not the point. It's, it's the principle. <laughs> it, it's, it's about ownership rights. The cats are doing something. <laughs> Let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you think I'm overthinking this. Suggestions on how he can fix it. Because that's not acceptable. And if you're a creator, it shouldn't be acceptable to you either. No matter how much you like it.